Hey everyone, it's Miss Rolf, and I'm here to talk to you today about point of view and syntax and analyze a story called Girl by Jamaica Kincaid. Before we get into analyzing the story, we need to review a couple of devices. The first one is point of view. I'm going to have my friends at Flocabulary <laughs> help me out with the point of view review. Here we go. Every story has a narrator, and every narrator has a different point of view. Which point of view is yours? Let's go! Everybody wants to know my point of view. First person is me, second person is you. Third person is he, third person is she. Everybody wants to know my POV. Everybody wants to know my point of view. First person is me, second person is you. Third person is he, third person is she. Everybody wants to know my POV. Hey yo, knock knock, who's there? Narrator, narrator, who? Narrator, who gonna tell the story from a point of view? Every story's written in a certain voice. When you're writing, you need to make a choice. First, second, the third person, POV. The first person is all about me or we, like we climbed the tree. I closed my eyes and I felt the breeze. I might be unreliable if I don't tell the truth. Now let's switch the point of view to you. In the second person, you're in a taxi. You're wondering how you got there exactly. The third person is he or she. He walked down the street and he saw the queen. She was just hip like it wasn't a thing. That's the third person, take it from him. Third person narration could be objective, omniscient, or from a limited perspective. Can the narrator see in everyone's thoughts? Narrating omnisciently like a boss. Everybody wants to know my point of view. First person is me, second person is you. Third person is he, third person is she. Everybody wants to know my POV. Everybody wants to know my point of view. First person is me, second person is you. Third person is he, third person is she. Everybody wants to know my POV. All right now, check your notes. Tell me which POV is in each quote. I was born with water on the brain. That's first person. He looked up into Father Wolf's face and laughed. That's third person. We didn't always live on Mango Street. That's first person. Sophie closed her eyes and lay quite still. That's third person. Your feet are now stuck in green slime. That's second person. In the hole in the ground, there lived a hobbit. That's it made me so sick I almost fell out of the tree That's First person You're thinking this wasn't the way it was supposed to go That's Second person My name is Katniss Everdeen I'm 17 years old That's First person Everybody wants to know my point of view First person is me, second person is you Third person is he, third person is she Everybody wants to know my POV Everybody wants to know my point of view First person is me, second person is you. Third person is he, third person is she. Everybody wants to know my POV. Okay. Thanks, Flocabulary, for that review. The next device I want to review is syntax. So the basic definition of syntax is the way words are arranged within a sentence, also the length of a sentence. Repetition is a form of syntax. So if things are repeating in the story, that's uh, syntax and you should highlight it. Parallelism is when you have sentences that are kind of balanced on both sides. Um, I'm gonna give you a hint. There isn't any parallelism in the story we're gonna read. <laughs> okay, sentence length and type. Also, what is the purpose of the sentence? Is it making a statement? Is it giving it a command? Is it asking a question? Is it making an exclamation? Is it long? Is it short? Look at the punctuation. What do you notice about it? These are all things that an author does to use syntax to sort of get their message across. And the syntax in the story we're gonna read is gonna be very important, as well as the point of view. Okay. 
Before we get to reading her story, here's a little background on Jamaica Kincaid. She's originally from an island in the Caribbean called Antigua. And as you can see, it is this tiny little dot right here, right there. Um, that's where she's from. She first came to America and moved to New York City where she worked as an au pair or a nanny. And then she studied phot photography in New Hampshire, but eventually came back to New York City and began writing for the New Yorker until 1995. She's published over 20 books, many of which are award winners. Um, you can look that up if you're interested. She currently lives in Bennington, Vermont, not TV, like it says on my PowerPoint, I should fix that. Um, and she works at Harvard University right now in Cambridge, Massachusetts. So she splits her time between Bennington and Cambridge. Okay, first reading of Girl. I want you to listen and follow along with this video. And if you want to mark your own copy for noticings, things that are surprising or questions you have, you can do that. Or you can just go ahead and listen. I do have some audio of the author reading the story that you can listen along to, or you can just read it. So let me just get my audio pulled up. Sorry, I was unprepared for this part. Okay, I'm more prepared now. So listen as the video kind of audio plays and you can read along in your own copy or just look at the screen. Gonna open up the reading right here first. It's called Girl and it goes like this. Wash the white clothes on Monday and put them on the stone heap. Wash the color clothes on Tuesday and put them on the clothesline to dry. Don't walk bare head in the hot sun. Cook pumpkin fritters in very hot sweet oil. Soak your little clothes right after you take them off. When buying cotton to make yourself a nice blouse, be sure that it doesn't have gum on it because that way it won't hold up well after a wash. Soak salt fish overnight before you cook it. Is it true that you sing Benna in Sunday school? Always eat your food in such a way that it won't turn someone else's stomach. On Sundays, try to walk like a lady and not like the slut you are so bent on becoming. <laughs> Don't sing Benna in Sunday school. You mustn't speak to wharf rat boys, not even to give directions. Don't eat fruits on the street, flies will follow you. But I don't sing Benner on Sundays at all and never in Sunday school. This is how to sew on a button. This is how to make a buttonhole for the button you have just sewed on. This is how to hem a dress when you see the hem coming down and sew to prevent yourself from looking like the slut I know you are so bent on becoming. This is how you iron your father's khaki shirt so that it doesn't have a crease. This is how you iron your father's khaki pants so that they don't have a crease. This is how you grow okra far from the house because okra tree harbors red ants. When you are growing dasheen, make sure it gets plenty of water or else it makes your throat itch when you are eating it. This is how you sweep a corner. This is how you sweep a whole house. This is how you sweep a yard. This is how you smile to someone you don't like too much. This is how you smile to someone you don't like at all. This is how you smile to someone you like completely. This is how you set a table for tea. This is how you set a table for dinner. This is how you set a table for dinner with an important guest. This is how you set a table for lunch. This is how you set a table for breakfast. This is how to behave in the presence of men who don't know you very well. And this way, they won't recognize immediately the slut I have warned you against becoming. <laughs> Be sure to wash every day, even if it is with your own spit. 
Don't squat down to play marbles. You are not a boy, you know. Don't pick people's flowers. You might catch something. Don't throw stones at blackbirds because it might not be a blackbird at all. This is how to make a bread pudding. This is how to make dukuna. This is how to make pepper pot. This is how to make a good medicine for a cold. This is how to make a good medicine to throw away a child before it even becomes a child. This is how to catch a fish. This is how to throw back a fish you don't like. And that way, something bad won't fall fall on you. This is how to bully a man. This is how a man bullies you. This is how to love a man. And if that doesn't, and if this doesn't work, there are other ways. And if they don't work, don't feel too bad about giving up. This is how to spit up in the air if you feel like it. And this is how to, me to move quick so that it doesn't fall on you. <laughs> this is how to make ends meet. Always squeeze bread to make sure it's fresh. But what if the baker won't let me feel the bread? You mean to say that after all, you're really going to be the kind of woman who the baker won't let near the bread? Okay, for the second reading, you're gonna read it on your own and you're gonna highlight for the following. Point of view, words that tell you the point of view. Hint, does it ever switch? If it does, that's important and you should highlight that. Syntax, repetition. Also note punctuation and sentence length in this story specifically and make inferences as to why you think the author chose to write it that way. Conflict, are there any conflicts in this story? highlight them or things that you think are conflicts. Also characterization, what is the personality of the speaker? Highlight for that, make inferences as to the kind of person that you think the speaker is. 